It was only fitting that Robin Yount threw out the ceremonial first pitch before the Milwaukee Brewers took on the Los Angeles Dodgers in Game 7 of the National League Championship Series on Saturday night at Miller Park. As a member of the only Brewers club to make it to the World Series in 1982, Yount knew as well or better than anyone what was at stake for the clubs. And, after a wait of 36 years, he was well aware of how badly the team's fans wanted another shot at the Fall Classic We need this stuff around here. This is what gets people excited, said Yount, who could barely contain his own anxious excitement about the looming proceedings, if it wasn't for the fans, none of this stuff happens. So, to see this much excitement around here, it's the best. You wish it could happen every year but obviously it doesn't, no, it doesn't. There was no way to know when that star-stuffed 82 team made it to the World Series, only to lose in heartbreak in seven games to St. Lewis, that a return trip would not be around the corner. Many Brewers fans thought that team would make it back the next year, but a late-season fade nixed that possibility. Then years passed, and decades, with no World Series. In 2011, the Brewers were knocked off in Game 6 of the NLCS by the Cardinals, whose destiny has been to break the hearts of Milwaukee fans in October. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, the 2018 Brewers got hot just at the right time, surging to the NL Central crown, then sweeping the NL Division Series against Colorado. Next came the NLCS battle against the big market Dodgers, with the evenly matched clubs splitting the first six games. Could the long wait for another World Series finally be coming to an end? Yount, for one, said it was time for the 82 team to step aside and make room for another lasting memory, I think the fans of Milwaukee. And not just Milwaukee, the whole state of Wisconsin remembers the 82 team, said Yount, who threw out the ceremonial first pitch to former teammate and longtime pal Jim Gantner, I think wherever we go, we get comments on that. But the generations are turning over. The ones that saw us play are getting a little long in the tooth. We've got the next generation. And they're going to remember these guys like mom and dad remember the 82 group. So these guys are starting a legacy of their own, which is great. After finishing his pre-game media session and tossing out that first pitch, Yount settled in with wife Michelle and Brewers executives to watch the biggest game ever played in Miller Park. Before doing so, Yount made it clear that watching from the seats was tougher than playing in the games, when that was his thing, it's a heck of a lot easier to be in uniform during these games than it is being a fan in the stands, he insisted. I was way more nervous today than I was when I played. And it's not to throw out the first pitch because that's easy, Yount then passed along a personal note that many Brewers fans could relate to with a big game coming up. He said he didn't dare park his car in a different spot at Miller Park than the previous evening, when the Brewers pulled away to a 7-2 victory in Game 6 to even the NLCS, and Yount made fun of himself for doing so, it's not a superstition, it's just a routine, Yount said, repeating earlier comments he heard manager Craig Council make about such pre-game habits. I don't want you to mistake that. So, we are creatures of habit that way. When things are going well, you kind of follow suit, right? Before the game began, the topic of Christian Yelich's slump in the NLCS came up in a small group that include Yount. He said good things might be coming for Yelich on the basis of the line drive double he ripped to right center the previous evening, sometimes, all it takes is for one ball to find grass to get you going. Yount said. As it turned out, those words were prophetic. In the first inning, Yelich lined a 98 mph fastball from Dodgers rookie Walker Buehler just over the fence in right center for a home run, his first of the series. Just like that, the crowd was fully engaged, with the noise level rising noticeably. That didn't quiet it in the Dodgers' second inning, however. After Manny Machado answered another long round of boos from Brewers fans with a two-strike bunt for a hit, Cody Bellinger crushed a 2-2 pitch from Jolis Chasen into the second deck and right for a two-run homer that put Los Angeles on top 2-1, that blast sucked some energy out of the crowd, which grew quieter. And Chasen did not last long.
After two innings, he was lifted for pinch hitter Jonathan Scope, who stranded two runners by bouncing out to third. It looked as if Yelich would come through again with a runner on second with two down in the fifth when he greeted reliever Julio Urias with a drive to left center. The Dodgers left fielder Chris Taylor stuffed a dagger in the hearts of Brewers fans by racing over and reaching up to haul in the ball on the warning track. Yasiel Puig then totally crushed the home faithful with a three-run home run off Jeremy Jeffers in the sixth that gave the Dodgers a commanding 5-1 lead. The early innings certainly were not promising as Brewers fans waited to see if the long wait for another World Series would finally end.